Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I am coming back at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to continue on with our World War II project updates. And uh, this is basically part two of my hedges project that I um, needed for the Lafir Bridge. Uh, we've got all the popsicle sticks uh, with their texture paste on there already. I used I used muddy ground from AK, and this is they've all dried, and they're all uh, flat. Uh, I do believe because it's not a uh, it didn't it has like very low shrinkage it didn't take the popsicle stick and bend it or warp it or anything like that so actually it would, it's done very well if I had used like an Elmer's glue and put flock or something on there uh, it might have shrunk or expanded in a way that would have caused the popsicle stick to warp all right now last night you saw that I had, you saw how I went ahead and cut up these uh, scrub pads, but I also flocked them, and there is quite a bit of flock that's fallen into this box, which is fine, right? So, because I, I, I meant to go back over this and kind of knock off just anything that was extra right okay off of all of these any of these some of these don't have hardly any on there but there's just enough to make that look like a hedge some of these have the woodland scenics uh, blended turf and with them all falling into this box it's all going to be mixed up and what I plan to do is save whatever flocks in here for any future project I could just use this mixture uh, for like terrain features. All right, so let me knock all this flock off and then we'll be right back. I'm gonna use the clear grip, not an Elmer's. Uh, I've decided to go with, this is a, this glue works really well on terrain and it doesn't cause any warping and it's got a quick uh, it's very tacky so your terrain won't want to move around once you press it into place now I'm putting this on the flat edge And then I'm going to press it into this. That bend, you got to kind of straighten it out. press down so that the clear grip can grip onto the popsicle stick like that right all right now I was I was looking at these green ones the ones that are like 10 millimeters wide they really really stand out as being wide comparatively the other ones seem to be very thin
So I was wondering, these popsicle sticks are almost not wide enough. You can kind of see the, uh, which is, which is okay. Just means I won't have to flock that popsicle stick at all because the hedge is wider than the stick. But like on that one, I'm going to have to touch up on the, the stick. Okay. Now as I do these, I want to remind you in last night's video, I mentioned that I was going to cut some of these um, hedges in half and then a plant a plant a tree in the popsicle stick and then put a hedge on both sides of the of the tree branch or the tree trunk right well after thinking about it I decided not to do that okay so I've got some of these trees short trees that I've already mounted on bases all my trees are mounted on these bases you know like that or what have you and uh, what I have do always done in the past and I think I'm going to continue to do that on this battlefield is to disguise the gap between two hedges with a tree so like all of these short hedges and even the long ones are paired up with other hedges and there might be a long one and a short one um, there we go there might be a long one and a short one as part of a larger hedge but I could always put these like that and just leave the tree on a separate base right even the smaller ones even if it's a turn or something like that I could always put a tree like that or even on the inside however or directly in line You know, we're going to be able to do it just like that. Now, what makes you, what made me think like that? Well, these popsicle sticks are only about nine millimeters wide and If I was to plant a tree in the middle of one of these hedges, first of all, it's going to make that hedge, it's going to, how do I say this? It's going to take a tree away from me um, that I might have wanted to use in a forest or in, an, in a park or a, a different bocage or something, right? Okay. But primarily what was what my thought process was was this thing's only about nine millimeters wide and that tree is going to make it top heavy and then it could tip over fairly easily and I didn't want my hedges to constantly be knocked over people bumping a table me bumping a table uh, 
figures being pushed up against the hedge and then watching the hedge just topple over. And then the player having, you know, knocked it over, having to stand it back up or whatever. And I definitely didn't want that. Let me get these short ones all done and then I will show you what we're going to do with the long ones. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. All the shorter ones are finished. Now, what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the bottom of all my six inch ones, and some of them are numbered because they pair up with these to make a longer hedge and so whichever one it pairs up with is the color the hedge color that I want to use to make it look coherent consistent okay these are all unique and can be any whatever's remaining. <clears throat> uh, there's five of these, okay. These two 22s probably go together. 21, 24, 32, okay. This one is 33, so it goes something someplace completely different. But that's a 32. That's a 21. Okay, that's 31. 24. There's a 22, okay. Maybe that's a really long one. Here's another 22. And then this is a rest area, so this one doesn't matter. Okay, now this 33, if I numbered it, I think I would have paired it up with something. So let's double check this just to make sure. Might not have, but I, I just would have thought that if I numbered it, I would have paired it up with something. Oop, there's a 31. Okay. Well, see, I found a 31. I'm glad I double checked. Yeah. Okay, so I don't remember where this 33 belongs. We'll leave those over there. Okay, so this is a 32, and this is going to also be a 32. So I want to find one of these 6-inch hedges that's going to pair up with it really well. And I think it's this one. Oh, I think it's going to be this one.
32 and 32. Now this 22 is, is going to be a long one, it looks like. So we're going to add this guy. And this guy. Okay. All right, so you basically get the idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just gluing these onto their sticks. So, um, I'm going to fast forward and you'll see me when I get them all glued down. Alright, so now I'm almost done with all of these. Um, but I thought of something that I wanted to share with you while I'm doing it. Um, uh, you might ask, Mr. Everything, why do you even bother with a popsicle stick on the bottom of your hedge? I mean, couldn't you just cut out some foam or some strips like this and just lay it on the table? Yes, you can, but uh, these sticks help keep your hedges straight. They keep them, it helps uh, weigh the bottom of them down, giving them giving them a base so they don't tip over. Uh, also, it um, gives you a. I know this is the uh, the least important part of it, but it gives you something to write on underneath it. It gives you a flat surface to take notes. You know, so you can write on the bottom of it. But yeah, mainly it gives it uh, a flat bottom, it keeps it straight, and uh, gives it a little bit of weight. So it doesn't tip over. Alright, let me finish these last few and I'll be right back. Alright, welcome back. we got a couple of additional techniques that I want to show you to to finalize these um, bocage strips uh, not bocage okay to finalize these hedges okay so we basically we're gonna take a hedge like this that didn't have a whole lot of coverage right especially on this side almost no coverage right but that's okay we're gonna add coverage directly to it so we take some watered down PVA and the old mixture that I had saved, but you can see what I'm about to do. I'm basically brushing on this watered down PVA, but only on like the top part of the hedge, not the whole thing. I'm going to turn it over. We're going to do that again. Now this side has flock on it already, but that's okay. We can, we can add a little bit more, but I also want to make sure that I get some on the top, right? More on the top than, it, than anywhere else. Okay. And then we just flock it like we normally flock bases or whatever. I'm just going to take this flock, I'm going to sprinkle it on, shake most of it off, flip it over. Now this is a mixture of medium ground scatter and foam flock. So you're going to get a little bit of both both worlds on there. All 
All right, and now you got a hedge that's pretty much, again, this is a wild hedge. This is not like your groomed hedge. Okay, we'll set that off to the side. All right, now I could do that again and again and again on all these different pieces, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna show you another technique. Okay, now if you remember, this is that um, uh, flowery, flowery scatter. I want to put it on one of these green ones that pretty much doesn't have anything at all on it. Again, we're going to Elmer's. Water. We're going to stir. I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. Mostly the top half. Now, if you remember, this scatter did not, it's the scatter I wanted to use, but it would not stick to spray adhesive for some reason. Either one, either the Elmer's or the Super 77. I'm hoping it'll stick to this Elmer's better. I guess we'll see. Okay, looks like I got glue everywhere. forget the ends. Alright, now that looks a little funny because you can probably see the wet Elmer's glue soaking through. So we're going to let that dry and we'll come back to it, okay? Okay, but we're not going to stop there. That's not my final technique. All right, now this one, this one is pretty bold. This technique is, um, I, I, I think I only want to do this to my thin bocage, <laughs> my thin hedges, 31, 31. Okay, so if I do it to this one, I'm going to have to do it to this one, so... Let's find one that really needs work. Okay, this guy definitely needs work. Maybe not so much on this side, but definitely on this side. Okay, so I put the water PVA away, and I'm going to be using tacky glue, fast grab tacky glue. Okay, and we're only going to do this one quarter at a time so like 
this quarter, this quarter, this quarter, and this quarter. And I'm going to put a lot of this. There we go. Kind of all over and some on the top as well. Okay, and then I'm going to take my clump foliage and I'm going to just pile it on. Now, the reason why I'm piling it on is so that when I apply my pressure, my hand doesn't get glue all over it. I'm being selfish. Also, that means I'm not, if I don't have glue all over my hands, the clump foliage is not going to be sticking all over my hands. Okay, just knocking the bottom away. Now, that's not, that's not the finished product. And knock some of that away. Anything that kind of dangles, you got to pluck it off to kind of. Because you don't want it to be excessive. Well, you do. You do want it to be excessive. But if something breaks off easily, do it now. That way it won't break off in the middle of a game or during transport. Okay, so you have a hedge like that. Okay, so what I like to do is have this dry a little bit before I move on to any of the other quarters. So I'm gonna set this down right there and I'm going to take another piece that I've already done a little bit of I've actually done both sides and then maybe I'll do a little bit more on this side I could also spread that around a little bit so it doesn't have big clumps on it. This color is different than that color, so it'll look it'll look varied. Now you can see this technique is just taking little bits at a time, not a big handful like that, just a little bit at a time, because I want it to look kind of mot motley like there's gaps or holes. If you notice, I'm using like five different techniques on all my different hedges, so every one of them is going to be a little bit different. Oh, 
Okay, there you go. That's kind of a wild hedge. That's not a groomed hedge. That's looking good, actually. I like it. This is probably a little bit too motley. <laughs> That's not bad. See, I don't mind a little bit of bush here and there. That's probably just a little bit too. Now, I think part of it was this one I started out by using straight Elmer's and not the tacky glue and I realized I was making a mistake and then went back started using tacky glue and realizing that that was the way to go I thought Elmer's would perform the same and it just does not just remember that when you're making your own. Okay, that's that's outstanding. I love the fact that it's got gaps in the green, the foliage. Gaps in the foliage. Okay, this, but not this much. This is too much gap. I'm going to put a little bit on the top. And I know if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you've probably heard me say this a hundred times. Terrain is random. Wildlife is random, not organized. Don't try to do it perfect. Let there be some mistakes. Let there be some imperfections. Because that's the way... We like it. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh. It is like that in real life. It's never perfect. Hills should not be perfect. Not perfectly round or whatever, you know? Okay. Whoop, it's taking my fingers. Okay. Okay, so it's kind of hard to decide what pieces need to come off until it fully dries. But that's a good piece. I'm liking it. Okay, back to the one we only did one quarter of. Right? That's like a full-on 100% coverage. It doesn't have to be that good. I don't remember what color I used. I used this one. All right. Remember, you 
got to let it dry. Okay, you press it into place, but a lot of that is only being held in there with tension because it's like they're like trapped between two pieces that are glued so it doesn't pop out. But once everything dries, you can run your hand over this and a lot of pieces will fall off. So it won't actually look like this when it's finished. Okay, that's starting to look good. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, work on these. I'm gonna get them all clump foliaged or if I get more like flowers or if I get more weeds or anything like that on these. When it's all done and it's all dry, we'll be back. All right, so we got all of these either flocked or I applied clump foliage to some of them. Some of them were well flocked from the initial flocking, so I didn't even touch them. Some were pretty poor, and so I went back in and reflocked them. I even have some sitting over here. When they all dry, I'll shake off any extra flock. I'll knock off any clump foliage, and then we'll take a close look at them. All right, so give it a few minutes, and let's see if we can't let that dry. All right, it's been about 30 minutes, so I hope that's been enough time. Let's go ahead and pull these out, knock them off, knock it off. Okay, no, that's still wet. I can, I can feel the wetness of the Elmers. Okay, well, these are also the last ones I did. So I'll put them over there. Actually, hell, I'll just leave them in there. We won't look at those. All right. Okay, so this, these have not been cleaned off at all, right? So let's do this. Let's, let's see. See? See how some of these pieces are falling off? But the majority of them are staying on. Okay. I think that looks good. Set him right there. I expect a ton to fall off of this bad boy. And I'm just basically gently rubbing my finger across there. A couple of pieces have already fallen off. You can probably see. That's why I brought the camera in a little bit closer. Yep, I'm pulling, but not all of it. You know, just 10% maybe coming off. Okay, 20% maybe, <laughs> 10 to 20%, there you go. Okay, closer to 20%. And then you get a piece like that that's stuck because part of it's glued on, I'll still take it and break it off, just like that one. Even though it's stuck, I'm still gonna break it off because it just doesn't look right. You know? Okay, that looks good. That's actually a really good hedge. I'm happy with that. 
All right, so let me go ahead and clean all of these off and I'll be right back. Oh, okay, I'm back. I didn't go very far because I thought of something else. Uh, when you're done cleaning everything off, you could always uh, get a get a spray like a like a a scenic cement or something like that, or watered down PVA, and you can spray it uh, to basically lock everything in, so it'll seal whatever terrain pieces you've made. Um, I do plan to do that, but only once I've gotten all the terrain done. So basically these are not going to be sprayed until I've got all the hedges, all the fields, the river, the trees, the buildings. Once everything is done, then I'll go back over it with some scenic cement and I'll spray the entire table and get everything squared away. Uh, so that will help seal these hedges as well. Okay, that looks good. Now this one, I deliberately put the majority of it close to the bottom, basically just to hide the popsicle stick, but also just to give it that look like there's bushes on the bottom and the hedges growing up out of the bushes. Something like that. All right, let me finish these and then I'll be right back. All right, so I just laid out a bunch of hedges um, and here's some 15 millimeter infantry and you can see that they're a little bit taller than the hedges, not by much. And like here is an armored vehicle a Sherman. These almost look like bocage, but they're not. They're hedges. Right? I went ahead and grabbed a bocage piece so that you could kind of see the difference. The bocage has a solid berm with vegetation on top of it, right? Where the hedges are a lot lower, where this would completely conceal your armored vehicle, where these hedges would not. Plus, this is hardcover exactly. So, so yeah, and th this is this is ninety percent of the hedges that I'm going to need for the entire battlefield, because it's it's split up about fifty fifty with bocage and with hedges. Uh, yeah, and here's some of the thicker ones. These are the ones with the clump foliage on it. Here's some thicker ones as well. And then the thin ones right there. Yeah, I think it looks really good. Um, they still need to do a little bit more on the drying, um, but that's okay. All right. So thanks for coming out and watching me uh, build these hedges over the last two videos. And uh, if you can continue to come out and watch additional terrain building, miniature construction, painting videos, all related to my World War II project. Uh, my next project is, or my next step in this project, is filling these ditches uh, for, and basically on the main roads, the paved roads. I have this map, this map, and that map there are the ones, w oh wait, and this too, are all paved roads and they have to be filled. Uh, and that'll be in my next video. All right guys, thanks for coming out and checking this out and you guys have a great day.